Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Good evening, this is Pastor Spencer from Messiah Lutheran Church in Salem, Oregon. Today is the 24th of September, Anno Domini 2020. It is Thursday evening, and tonight our psalm is the seventh psalm. We begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord my God, in you do I take refuge. Save me from my pursuers and deliver me, lest like a lion they tear my soul apart, rendering it into pieces with none to deliver. O Lord my God, if I have done this, if there is wrong in my hands, if I have repaid my friends with evil or plundered my enemies without cause, let the enemy pursue my soul and overtake it, and let them trample my life to the ground and lay my glory in its dust. Arise, O Lord, in your anger. Lift up against the fury of my enemies. Awake for me. You have appointed a judgment. Let the assembly of the peoples be gathered about you. Over it return on high. The Lord judges the peoples. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness and according to the integrity that is in me. O oh, let the evil of the wicked come to an end, and may you establish the righteous, you who test the minds and hearts, O oh, righteous God. My shield is with God, who saves the upright in heart. God is a righteous judge, and a God who feels indignation every day. If man does not repent, God will wet his sword. He has bent and readied his bow. He has prepared for him his deadly weapons, making his arrows fiery shafts. Behold, the wicked man conceives evil, and is pregnant with mischief and gives birth to lies. He makes a pit, digging it out, and falls into the hole that he has made. His mischief returns upon his own head, and on his own skull his violence descends. I will give to the Lord the thanks due to his righteousness, and I will sing praise to the name of the Lord, the Most High. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And our prayer for this evening. Lord our God, lover of the truth, help those who, for your name's sake, are lied against and slandered innocently. Strengthen, comfort, and uphold those who suffer wrongfully and break and hinder the craftiness of evil men who would suppress your truth and destroy your kingdom. In Jesus' holy name, amen. And tonight we continue our study of Luther's small catechism. We are actually in the creed tonight. We're in the second article of the Creed. And of course, this is the Apostles' Creed. And in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. What does this mean? I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all sins, from death, and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood, and with his innocent suffering and death that I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. Just as he has risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity, this is most certainly true. And tonight we again take a look at Luther's large catechism. We'll find it in the Book of Concord, Reader's Edition. If you have one, I would welcome you to open it up and join in. The second article, this is the preface. Note, God withholds nothing from us, but gives all that we need for our life on earth. Even more, he gives all that we need for eternal life with him in heaven. Luther focuses on the one phrase he believes is the 
very essence of this article in Jesus Christ our Lord, providing a sweeping description of creation and the fall. Luther notes that the word we include every single person in the whole horrible drama of the Garden of Eden, in that sin all fell away from God and were doomed to everlasting damnation. Yet Christ our Lord came and snatched us from the jaws of hell. The description of Christ's victory over Satan would have been very familiar to the people who first read the large catechism. Many paintings from that era depict hell with horrifying detail, showing men and women being led to the gaping mouth of a dragon-like creature. Luther used the biblical motif of Christ as victor to describe his work of salvation for us. Jesus offered his own precious blood as satisfaction for our sins. The article of the creed is essential for proper understanding and confession of the gospel. And so we step right into the large catechism. And in Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Here we learn to know the second person of the Godhead. We see what we have from God over and above the temporal goods mentioned before. We see how he has completely poured forth himself, Matthew 26, 28, and withheld nothing from us, 2 Corinthians 8, 9. Now this article is very rich and broad, but in order to explain it briefly, also in, in a childlike way, we shall take up one phrase and sum up the entire article. As we said, we may learn from this article how we have been redeemed, we shall base this on these words, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Now if, you are, now, if you are asked, what do you believe in the second article about Jesus Christ? Answer briefly, I believe that Jesus Christ, God's true Son, has become my Lord. But what does it mean to become Lord? It is this, He has redeemed me from sin, from the devil, from death, and from all evil. For before I did not have a lord or king, but was captive under the devil's power, condemned to death, stuck in sin and blindness. See Ephesians 2, 1 through 3. For when we had been created by God the Father, and had received from him all kinds of good, the devil came and led us into disobedience, sin, death, and all evil. Genesis chapter 3. So we fell under God's wrath and displeasure and were doomed to eternal damnation just as we had merited and deserved. There was no counsel, help, or comfort until this only and eternal Son of God, in His immeasurable goodness, had compassion upon our misery and wretchedness. He came from heaven to help us. See John 1.9. So those tyrants and jailers are all expelled now. In their place has come Jesus Christ, Lord of life, righteousness, every blessing, and salvation. He has delivered us poor lost people from hell's jaws, and has won us, has made us free, Romans 8, 1 and 2, and has brought us again into the Father's favor and grace. He has taken us as his own property under his shelter and protection, Psalm 61, verses 3 and 4 so that he may govern us by his righteousness, wisdom, power, and life, and blessedness. Let this, then, be the sum of the article. The little word, Lord, means simply the same as Redeemer. It means the one who has brought us from Satan to God, from death to life, from sin to righteousness, and who preserves us in the same. But all the points that follow in this article serve no other purpose than to explain and express this redemption. They explain how and by whom it was accomplished. They explain how much it cost him and what he spent and risked so that he might win us and bring us under his dominion. It explains that he became man, John 1.14, was conceived and born without sin, Hebrews 4.15, from the Holy Spirit and from the Virgin Mary, Luke 1.35, so that 
he might overcome sin. Furthermore, it explains that he suffered, died, and was buried so that he might make satisfaction for me and pay what I owe, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 4. Not with silver or with gold, but with his own precious blood, 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19. And he did all this in order to become my Lord. He did none of these things for himself, nor did he have any need for redemption. After that, he rose again from the dead, swallowed up and devoured death, 1 Corinthians 15, 54. And finally, ascended into heaven and assumed the government of the Father's right hand, 1 Peter 3.22. He did these things so that the devil and all powers must be subject to him and lie at his feet, Hebrews 10.12-13. Until finally, at the last day, he will completely divide and separate us from the wicked world, the devil, sin, death, and such, Matthew 25.31-46. And 13, 24 through 30, and verses 47 through 50. To explain all these individual points does not belong to a brief sermon for children. That belongs to fuller sermons that, that extend throughout the entire year, especially at those times that are appointed for the purpose of treating each article at length for Christ's birth, suffering, resurrection, ascension, and so on. Yes, the entire gospel that we preach is based on this point, that we properly understand this article as part, as this article as that upon which our salvation and all of our happiness rest. It is so rich and complete that we can never learn it fully. So, this article is about Jesus Christ as Lord. All of Scripture is Christocentric. It's centered in Christ. The Old Testament points forward to the cross. The New Testament points backwards to the cross. The Old Testament is all about his story. The New Testament's all about history. It's all about Christ and him crucified to become our Lord and Savior. And to be a Lord is is, is something that there are good lords and there are bad lords. There are lords that if the devil's your Lord, he wants to put you in bondage and make you subject to him. If Jesus is your Lord, He wants to set you free and have you walk with Him. He calls you brother. You are a child of God. And so, He wants to be the Lord. He restored the relationship between you and the Father. What was broken by one man was cured by another, by Jesus. He went to the cross to pay the price that we would owe for the wages of sin or death. His death paid that price. And so, being God and being man, and it's wonderful because guess who the judge is? Jesus, the same one that paid the price for your sin. The devil may be there accusing you of all sorts of sins, but Jesus says, I paid for that one. As a matter of fact, I paid for all of them. And so, truly is what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. Thank God. Thank Jesus. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift His countenance upon you and give you peace. God's blessings. Have a great night in the Lord.